Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow From E5B. Today we're going to take you on a tour of our patio, terrace, and container. So those of you that have been following along with us on Instagram at Grow From E5B may know that Christopher and I built this home in 2018. So when we moved in, it was a completely blank slate covered in sand. And for the last few years, we've really been debating what we want to do with our backyard. And we went through a myriad of ideas. I mean, anything from a deck to a stone patio to a small patio. And finally, we decided, you know what, we're going to go big or go home. And so this is what we decided to do. We decided to install a raised terrace with a pea gravel patio underneath that will create an outdoor living space that we can truly enjoy. So the first thing you'll notice behind me is our giant set of stairs that are tiered like cupcakes, as Christopher likes to call them. So if you can imagine that this entire space was just flat sand coming off of the back. And so what we wanted to do is we wanted to take this outdoor space that we're going to get to in a moment and bring it out to the back of the house to give us some living space outside. Come on. So this is the original outdoor living space that the house was built with and it was a concrete base and they gave us little wooden wooden steps so that we could pass closing down to our sandy grassy area and we thought that's not enough outdoor living space for people who love to garden and what we did is we talked to peak environmental which is the person who actually did the install after i came up with the design the initial design was let's do a deck because i didn't know that doing this raised terrace was going to be possible. And so this was going to be all decking. The decking was going to be placed on top and come out. And I met with Peak and they were like, that's going to be so expensive. You're better off doing a stone terrace. And I thought, really? Because that's our dream. I just thought financially that was completely like not an option. And when they said that it would actually be more affordable to do a stone terrace, I was super stoked because that's actually what we wanted. So for me, there were two design elements that were must-haves. The first one was wide, long cupcake stairs and lighting. So I did get both of those, um, but I will say, and I'm biased, this design's amazing because Eric did everything else. Our house is very square, 50 by 60 in the footprint. So we wanted to keep all of our hardscaping very rectangular, very square as well and then let the garden beds undulate and give it more character. When choosing materials, working with Peak Environmental, they helped us choose Champlain Gray as the color. It's a product from Teco Block that it looks great. It's got a little bit of weathered look to it. It's a little bit natural. It matches really well with the more solid slate color of the blue stones that give us three pathways out to the garden, which is also very nice in the morning when you don't want to put shoes on and you just have slippers, but you want to check out some stuff in the garden. We also went with this very modern pergola. We got this at Costco. Costco is amazing, of course, as well as the Adirondack chairs to go around the gas fireplace. One of the fun features of this pergola is it louvers open so you can get a little bit of sun or when there's a little sprinkle, you can still sit out and enjoy the fire tucked away. So Christopher talked about his needs of the giant cupcake stairs and the lighting, and my needs were a little bit more about the actual space and the functionality of what we're gonna do with it. And I thought we need a fire pit. You know, we have these adorable little nieces that come to visit, we're very social, we have a lot of people that come over, we have parties, so we wanted a fire pit. I did not want to do wood, so we chose gas. Um, and then I also wanted a place where we could do elevated beds. And as you can see behind us, which we're going to go more in depth in another video, we did a group of elevated beds from Gardener Supply, and we stained them ourselves with Vermont Natural Coatings. And then I also wanted conversation areas up here on top that were surrounded by plants. And so now we're going to take a little more in-depth look into the containers that we planted this season and uh, how they're doing. So what I like to do is I like to group containers in groups of three or four or multiple groups, um, especially varying sizes of containers. So there's three containers here, and I wanted to make sure that there was a centerpiece in each grouping. 
And this is starting with a bonfire peach patio tree. This is rated down to a zone five, so it should be able to overwinter in this container if we tuck it under that covered space that we showed you earlier in the video. And it does produce peaches, and they are, it's said they're not delicious raw, but if you cook them, they're palatable. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Mostly we chose it for the foliage. That is underplanted with some superbina, pink cashmere, and supertunia mini vista indigo around, which this is our favorite supertunia mini vista because the color is amazing. I love how it shows three or four colors at once with the fading throughout the season. That's beautiful. A purple fountain grass with rock and deep purple salvia. We have this repeated all through our garden because we love that it attracts the hummingbirds and the pollinators. This is underplanted with more Supertunia mini vista indigo. This is a marine thyme heliotrope and a salmon colored geranium. And this final grouping is Mulberry Amnesia and a new for 2024 Supertunia mini vista sweet sangria improved. Here in a little part sun grouping, it gets Strong morning sun, a little bit of afternoon sun, but not consistent throughout the day. We went with this Asian council tree, which will be an indoor plant in the summertime. We wanted something with a little bit of yellow foliage to go with the dark foliage of that peach tree. Underplanted here is the new for 2024 Supertunia, the Hoopla Vivid Orchid, and some more of the pink cashmere. It was just cut back, and it does primarily put out heavy foliage and an occasional flower. It's definitely a different look and it shows you the performance when there's less sun. Below that is more of the mulberry nemesia. This is the... Supertunia. Supertunia. Mini Vista. Mini Vista. Something to do with water. Marine. Marine. Ultramarine. Ultramarine. Ultra okay, there we go. <laughs> um, and again, this one would have that same habit as the sweet sangria, but it's in just a little bit less sun. No less amazing color though. Um, a newly noir coleus, more of the rock and deep purple salvia, repeating some of the other annuals that we have. And this is a little whip of a tree. It's actually a variegated beech tree. So we're keeping this in the pot because we don't want any animals to get to it. Maybe this year, maybe one more year, and then that's gonna go find a home in the landscape. You know, I bought that on Etsy. I was just, you know how in the wintertime you're looking around for plants and ideas and I just saw this variegated foliage and I was like, I love beech trees. I love variegation. Let's see what this is. There's a tag down there, Christopher. So oh. I can get the exact name. Exact name, exact name. Marmor Star. Yeah, I'm excited to see that grow. I love beech trees. I think that's gonna be really cool. And Eric, if you spin around, in not too quick. Spot. We don't want to make people ill. Not too quick. <laughs> we have repetition of the annuals, but we have our blue centerpiece. This is a Moffat blue juniper, um, a great specimen. These get about 10 foot by three foot. This is a 31 inch container. So it may have another season in this container, but I think with the fertilizing we do of the annuals, it's putting on way more growth than we had expected. I know, I think junipers do really well for us in containers because junipers don't mind that extra water that the annuals get. And I, for one, I'm a fan of leaving it for another year, um, but we'll see. We'll see. And very cool, the trailing habit of the mini Vista Indigo. It is literally growing up inside the juniper. Yeah. Apparently it also has a climbing habit. And the only additional annual in this container that isn't in any other one is this sweet alyssum, and this is Violet Night. Violet Night. So what we did with these three containers is we wanted to make sure that there was a chartreuse -y color, a blue color, and a purpley red color to kind of give us those three colors to bounce off of each other. And then we repeated annuals in each one so they were tied together. So although the containers are all very different, there are annuals in there to tie them all together. Go. So here's another grouping of three containers that are for the shade. And as you can see, the Surefire White Begonia is super happy right here. It is kind of taking over this container and this container. But planted alongside that is an Endless Illumination Bowalia. This is Rocapoco Impatience, 
Underneath here, you can see one of the new for 2024 Selenia begonias. It's yellow. Velveteen coleus, pink shabli lamium, and a little more endless illumination boalia. And so these are the shade containers because this barely gets any sun. This is the north side of our home. And then if you follow me under here, I can show you some additional shade containers. Back here in this corner is an asparagus fern that we had wintered over. This is one of the proven winter selections. Some begonias, fuchsia, another begonia, and creeping jenny. So this really only gets light very early in the morning. And then in these hanging baskets, which I know a lot of people always ask on Instagram where they're from. These hanging baskets are from Hay Needle. If you search metal orb hanging basket, they will come up. But I'll let you know that they come rusted. And what I did is I sanded them down and I spray painted them with uh, Rust-Oleum black spray paint. But in these are Surefire Way Begonias and Wicked Witch Coleus. <laughs> I love the look of terracotta pots. But that terracotta color doesn't really go with the aesthetic that we have out here on the patio. And so now our local nursery sells these terracotta pots that are a little bit of a deeper, richer brown. And it just really goes great with what we have going on out here. And you'll notice that design wise, all of the things that are not plants, the chairs, the pillows, the umbrella, the furniture, everything's super neutral. So that what really shines out here are the flowers. And so these, again, are more of the salmon geraniums from the other containers to pull it over here. We have an herb garden set up over here, which, you know, we like to say is used for cooking, but really it's used for cocktailing. And then one of the cute things that we have, just a little bit of whimsy. I'd like a little more whimsy in the garden. Christopher kind of fights the whimsy. I'm working on it. He's working on it. But we have these two um, urns that are shaped like gentlemen heads. And inside is the new for 2024 Apple Blossom Begonia from Proven Winners. And there's a matching one over on the other side. And so that's an overview of all of the containers that we have up on the terrace. In our next video or the one after that, we're definitely going into what is planted in the elevated garden beds, the new Proven Winners Aquapot Lights, and the other various annuals over there. One of the perks of having a raised terrace is the benefit of this incredible stone wall. Planting up against this gives a little nod towards the walled English gardens, the oak leaf, hostas, and also one of the things about having a raised terrace is power. People have asked us, where are the plugs? Where does everything happen? And so it's tucked in here in that little box. There is also an outlet. There's another outlet that was trenched all the way to the other side of the terrace, and we're going to pop over really quick so I can show you how we managed to keep that hidden. And that outlet is hidden under a fake rock. Gotta love a fake boulder. And zinnias. And hidden zinnias. By zinnias and a fake boulder. And so one of the things that we've kept uh, in theme with, with our house, which is very square. I mean, it's basically a square because we know that makes construction affordable. Um, but we also wanted to make the terrace square and the patio square. But what's going to soften it is creating these undulating beds around it. And so even though it's, you know, straight lines everywhere, the plantings are what soften it up.
Thanks for joining us. Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow From E5B. Thanks for growing with us.